welcome back to another lecture on diffraction in the last lecture we have seen that what is the difference between interference and diffraction we have seen that fundamentally both interference and diffraction are same and the conditions which are required to observe the interference and diffraction pattern they are also same we take both are based on the principle of superposition and we require coherent sources but still we are giving a new name as diffraction so what additional information we are taking into account in order to study diffraction and we saw in the last lecture that that additional information is that we are taking into account the width of the slit let us now in this lecture see in detail the interference the pattern which we get when we take into account the slit width so let us study frown of a diffraction due to single slit let us take a slit whose width is e now in the last lecture i mentioned that by huygens principle every point on the wave front will act as a source for the secondary wavelengths so by taking this into account all the points will act as a source for the secondary wavelets so we will get many waves from here and then these waves will superimpose and give me pattern on the screen now let us take how the intensity is modified when we take this width of the slit into account now these two and also we will take one lens because we are studying frown of a diffraction from the end points let us mark these points slit as ab now these points they directly superimpose and give me central maxima at point p and again the two waves which are being diffracted at angle theta let us make these waves meet at point p not and let these waves be diffracted by angle theta in order to find the path difference between the rays waves a p not and b p not let us drop a perpendicular and mark this point as c again as we have discussed earlier again this angle will be theta now the path difference between ap not and bp not will be bc and we can write this as e sin theta then the phase difference between these two waves would be 2 pi by lambda e sin theta now according to huygens principle this th these points will act as a source for secondary wavelets and these will be infinite number of points but for the simplicity of calculation let us consider that this width of the slit be divided into n equal parts and another important point is that each part will have will be a wave of amplitude a so i can imagine this slit width ab be divided into n parts n points and each point will give me a secondary wave and each wave will have a amplitude a then n equal parts and then if i write the phase difference between any two consecutive consecutive waves from these parts
would be 1 by n into 2 pi by lambda e sin theta. Let us call this as let and also I can call the phase difference between two parts be phi. So my total phase difference would be So I can write this equation as I can take n on the other side so I can write this as or pi by lambda e sin theta is equal to n phi by from this equation just I am taking n on the other side and 2 on the other side and then I can denoting this by alpha. This would help me later. Okay, Now I know the phase difference so from the slit A to B I, it is being divided into n equal parts. Each part is a wave with amplitude A and each the two constituted waves, waves have a phase difference of phi. Now what do I have? What is my next goal? My next goal is to find the resultant intensity because of these n waves whose consecutive phase difference is phi. In order to find the intensity let us find first the resultant amplitude of all these n waves with phase difference phi. How do I do that? I can all these n waves I can draw in this way. Let us take so these waves will look like like this. You can consider these waves as vectors whose amplitude is a and all these waves will have amplitude a and the phase difference between two consecutive waves will be phi. Now in order to simplify this diagram I can imagine like this the first vector I can and uh, what is my goal to find the resultant amplitude of all these waves how do I do that I can imagine this as the first vector same as a now this second vector again it has an amplitude a this is also a this is also a this second vector I can displace and the tail of this vector if I put it here and I draw like this A so this angle will be phi then the second vector how much angle it will make with the first vector this will be 2 phi so second vector if I imagine the tail of this vector here and then so basically I am displacing parallelly these vectors I am displacing parallelly by taking their tail at the tip of the first vector. So this I can imagine like this. Again it is A and the angle which it will make with the first vector will be 2 phi and so on. We can keep doing this. So basically our aim is to find the resultant of all these vectors. So I can join all these waves like this and denote this as R and let this final angle already we have taken theta and phi let me take this as theta prime so my aim is to find to find R that is resultant of all these vectors how do I do that so this is very easy. So what we can do? I need to find the resultant of all these vectors. So what I can do? For every vector I can resolve. I can find the horizontal component and the, pal and the vertical component. For the first vector. So what is my for the resultant R? 
what will be my horizontal component that will be the horizontal component component would be component of r would be r cos theta prime this is equal to this is a resultant of all the horizontal components of all the vectors the first vector horizontal component is a another vector second vector i take the horizontal component is a cos phi third vector horizontal component will be a cos 2 phi and this will go and if there are total n vectors my the last vector would be a into cos n minus 1 phi because this first vector i have already taken into account this is my first equation then if i take the vertical component of r i can write as r sin theta prime then let us start with the again with the first vector the vertical component of first vector would be zero because it has no vertical component so the first vector vertical component will be zero second vertical component will be a sin phi then third a sin 2 phi and so on so similarly i will get a sin n minus 1 phi let us denote this as equation number 2 so basically we have these two equations and then we can find r n theta prime so we will continue this in our next lecture